Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Good morning and welcome to Bind Us Together. I'm Pastor Peg Harvey Moroz, the pastor of Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lewiston, Idaho, and the pastor of Genesee Lutheran Parish in Genesee, Idaho. We began Bind Us Together back in May 2020 when we were first on stay-at-home orders as a way to remind us that though we were physically distanced, that we were not alone. God is always with us. God is always loving us and God will never abandon us. We are the body of Christ. We are connected through the communion of saints. We are not alone. So good morning, Mike. Good to see you there. Good morning, Heidi. This morning, we are going to continue to wander in the wilderness, or at this point, kind of start our wandering in the wilderness with the um, Israelites. The last uh, two days, we have uh, looked at the, the miraculous things, on the one hand, the miraculous things that uh, God has done for the people of Israel, and the second thing is the, the um, response of the Israelites, uh, which has generally been uh, fear and trembling and, and not exactly happy. <laughs> so anyway, um, so the... Um, we looked at the crossing of the, what's called the Red Sea. It's actually the Reed Sea. Um, and uh, to get away from Pharaoh's army and how uh, the Israelites crossed on dry land and the um, Pharaoh's army, the chariots and the charioteers got wrapped up in the mud, ground down in the mud. Um, as they tried to follow, and then the water all came back in. And so today, we're going to continue with uh, what happens uh, right after that, like the next day. <laughs> and they've done all of the the singing and dancing and celebrating and now they head out. So I am in Exodus chapter 15, uh, verses 22 through 27 is what we're going to look at today. Then Moses ordered Israel to set out from the Reed Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water when they came to Mara, they could not drink the water of Mara because it was bitter. It is why it is called Mara, which means bitterness. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? He cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statue, statute, and an ordinance, and there he put them to the test. He said, if you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give heed to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will not bring upon you any of the diseases that I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where there were 12 springs of water, 
and 70 palm trees, and they camped there by the water. All right. Good morning, Jean, and good morning, Debbie. Good to see you all there. All right, so this is, this is, oh, I've got an itchy nose. Sorry, I may start sneezing. If so, please forgive me. <laughs> um, so this is the beginning of, of a pattern that happens with the Israelites. Uh, something miraculous happens. They move on through the wilderness. Uh, they get scared. They grumble. Um, <laughs> Moses gets irritated with them. And then God responds once again, saving them. <laughs> and, um, and the complaining gets uh, bigger and bigger uh, as, as they go along. And <laughs> part of the reason why I find it, I find this story hysterical in many ways, um, because God does amazing things for the Israelites and they go along and they, they don't think that God will do amazing things again. <laughs> and so they're just like, we're going to die. We're going to die. And, uh, <coughs> and it happens over and over again. And there are various responses that we're going to see in the next couple of days as well. Um, uh, and they, they complain against uh, Moses because Moses is the one who is leading them, who has received the word of God. And, poor, <laughs> and I can just imagine... This is now this is just me imagining. But here is Moses. He didn't want to do this to start with. <laughs> he he was um very much like Jonah. Um didn't want to do this. I'm not prepared. I'm not a good speaker. Don't send me to Pharaoh. What you know, why would you want to send me? And God is like <laughs> Because you're the one I chose, bud. <laughs> And so uh, here, this amazing, amazing escape has happened. They have gotten out of Egypt. They are no longer in slavery. And they're in the wilderness. And um, what we'll find as, as they go along is, we would have been better to just stay there in slavery. And... Just so many things going on, but they don't trust God, the God who has freed them. Um, and they don't trust Moses, who who first heard from God and led them out. Um, and, um, and yet God continues to forgive them and keep moving forward with them as uh, even though they are a grumpy, grumpy group of people. <laughs> now, why do I think this is so funny? This is not unique. <laughs> That's why I think this is so funny. It is a mirror to our human condition that uh, amazing things happen in our lives, our very life, <laughs> our very breath, our very bodies. And yet, you know, we can... We complain about nothing is ever good enough, <laughs> and uh, we have this human capacity to to see only the negative um, and to not trust that God is always with us. This is why I repeat it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. God loves us. God is with us, and God will not abandon us because we we can't quite believe this. Because our experience as human beings um, has it is that human beings let us down all the time. You know, the, the people who are supposed to love us the most, our parents, let us down. And that's not anything against anybody's parents, but you know, they're they're human. And the their children 
let the parents down. It just, it's what happens. It's what happens. And so to have complete trust in God when uh, we can't uh, put our, our hands on God. Uh, so we, we talk about that um, we, um, we believe in the God made visible, Jesus, um, so that we can believe in the God we cannot see because we don't know any other way to really perceive it. And uh, even those of us with the greatest of faith, the greatest of trust, uh, the doubt's always there. Um, that is the, the human experience that is part of being human. Thus, our need, constant need for grace. So, I find this story uh, just humorous over and over and over again. Um, and we also have to understand that the way the, the uh, first five books of the Bible uh, came to the form that they're in now, the writings had been all, all around. And it was during the Babylonian exile that these first five books of the Bible came into the form, uh, close to the form that they are in now. And so, you know, imagine the, the Israelites in, the, uh, in exile in, in Babylon, and they had to make sense of all this craziness that they were experiencing in their ag exile. And, um, and so these stories of God continually rescuing and rescuing and rescuing uh, were of such importance for them so that they did not give up hope for the future. Though, of course, they did over and over and over again. And then even when they were able to return to Jerusalem, they lost hope. Hope is one of those things. It's like, it's like your car keys. You can never uh, uh, keep track of it all the time because the doubts come in. But God proves God's self over and over and over again, uh, which we will see throughout um, these days. So this is the bitter water made sweet because of course the, the first thing that uh, people traveling through the desert wilderness need is water. And so um, that, uh, that is the first thing that God provides for the Israelites. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this story as much as I do. I I get the biggest kick out of these, just, uh, you know, reflecting against our own humanity. It just, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that uh, it's important for us in this particular time when so many of us are just itching, itching to get back to, you know, in-person worship, in-person everything. Um, because it's been so long and it's been so difficult, uh, but the pandemic, uh, you know, keeps going on and how much longer are we going to be able to stand this and, and yet our trust is not in our, uh, in our human abilities. Our trust is in God. So uh, the, the words um, of scripture to, to wait upon the Lord. We got to be patient. And Lord knows we, we are not doing a great job in the midst of this pandemic, though it has been a year. 
And certainly, God should be done with this, but you know, things are, are getting better. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And I, I heard a little composite um, on the news or someplace where all, all the officials are using this. There's light at the end of the tunnel, but we're still in the tunnel, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. <sighs> so we have a direction. I've got my first shot. I know a lot of you have have both of your shots. We're moving forward. We're going to get there. Be patient. Wait upon the Lord. Trust in the Lord's goodness. <sighs> yeah. All right. Let me see. So where's the, where's the words? All right. So, uh, our reading on, uh, Hopefully it's not a train. Yes, <laughs> the light. Well, it's the end of the tunnel, not, not, you know. Right, we're hoping that it's not a train. Thank you, Aggie, you always fill us with great images. <laughs> so we began uh, two days ago when uh, the Israelites were getting ready to, to step into the dry land uh, prepared. Um, so Jean says, trying to make a decision to go back to our worship at our saviors and feel safe has been a pull to the heart as we've lost people in our congregation. I truly will love. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so um, back on Monday, uh, as the we, we read about the Israelites getting ready to go on dry land to cross the Reed Sea, and uh, the word of God was, do not be afraid, I will fight for you. So we started, be not afraid. So this is the third verse of be not afraid. Here we go. Blessed are your poor, for the kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are you that weep and mourn, for one day you shall laugh. And if wicked ones insult and hate you, all because of me. Blessed, blessed are you. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come follow me. And I will give you rest. All right. So, what are our prayer concerns today? So, <laughs> maybe uh, help to not complain too much, although I'm really in the complaining mood. <laughs> To not complain and to trust in God. And uh, maybe just like uh, because the people complained against Moses, um, maybe uh, not complain against um, our leaders who are just trying to figure out how to get us through this. All right. Um, Aggie's friend, uh, for my friend Rhonda, she was life flighted to Portland Monday. Oh my goodness.
Do we know what's going on with her? Anything else? I have coffee this morning. I will. I will take a sip while I'm waiting. Serious lung issues, all right. Um, praise the Lord for a beautiful day. Yes, go outside, tilt your face up to the sun, get your vitamin D, it'll make everybody feel better. And I'm, and I'm saying that to myself too, because, uh, yeah. Anything else? Well, as usual, uh, if you think of something else, uh, go ahead and type it in. I will bring it in toward the end and let us pray. The Lord be with you. Bill is finally going fishing today. That's another phrase of the Lord because it makes him happy. The Lord be with you. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the story of the Israelites being freed from Egypt and wandering in the wilderness, always with an eye looking back. Wouldn't it be better to have stayed with the complaints against their leaders we're following God's command. Lord, we know that this is not unique to the Israelites, but that it is a human response to fear, to anxiety, to the unknown. Lord, uh, we ask that you help us to, to wait to not complain too loudly and to trust that God is with us and that God is ahead of us and that God will not abandon us. And Lord, in our time of, uh, of the pandemic, over a year now, we've been dealing with this and <sighs> Could you help us not complain against our leaders who are just trying to do the best that they can? And Lord, we ask that you help them to try to do the best that they can to get us through this and to stop fighting among one another and to see that the welfare of all the people is the most important thing and uh, political um, and party uh Jockeying is not helpful. Lord, we lift up Rhonda, who was a life flighted to Portland with serious lung issues. Lord, we pray for her healing. We pray for wisdom for her doctors and uh, all of her care providers. Uh, be with her and help her to heal and help her to uh, return home. And Lord, we give you thanks for a beautiful day. And we thank you for the opportunity to go outside, to raise our hand, faces to the sun and to receive that vitamin D that uh, will help our, our mindset, help our mood and uh, strengthen us for what lies ahead 
And Lord, we give thanks that Bill is able to go fishing today because that makes him happy. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Lord, all of these things we lift up to you, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, my dear friends, thank you for being here today. And remember, be kind, wash your hands, stay at home if you don't need to go out. Remember your neighbors, share the good news, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.